other such effects that have been seen at very low exposure levels, uh, and I don't have time to go into all the uh, papers that are relevant here, but one such study is the leakage of the blood-brain barrier seen at 400 microwatts uh, per kilogram. And you remember, you should be able to take two kilograms per, uh, sorry, two watts per kilogram. So this is 5,000 times below what is supposed to be safe. And all of you that are doctors, you know that you do not want to have any leakage of your blood-brain barrier. But we must assume that you have. And in Sweden and in other countries, we see a lot of effects that are of brain-derived nature. Something is not okay with people's brains any longer. Maybe this is part of the explanation. And I just talked about this. You remember two watts per kilogram you should be able to take. But you see from this slide, and it's one of many, many slides, showing that below or very much below or very, very much below these two watts per kilogram, you see effects on eating and drinking behavior, calcium fluxes, DNA effects, EEG brain wave alterations, leakage of the blood-brain barrier, and changes in cell cycle and cell proliferation. And you see these scientists, 1997, they are 100,000 times below the safe level. And again, you don't want to have any cell cycle or cell proliferation changes in your body, definitely not. Well, maybe you should translate that, because now I get into another portion here. <coughs> it's a very nice way to lecture, actually. I can relax, and then she will do some work. Okay. Um, otros efectos uh, que tiene la radiación sobre nosotros es um, los niveles de muchas partes de nuestro cuerpo bajan uh, mm, enormemente uh, por debajo de, de lo que deberían estar por ejemplo la sangre en el cerebro um, en, mm, muy por debajo de lo que uh, debería ser uh, seguro para nosotros After a number of years I felt very strongly that we as scientists had to do something more than just be in our laboratories and check test tubes and microscopic slides and that kind of things. So I said we need to get together and start writing and publishing resolutions around these questions and you know in science that's very, very, very rare. That's very seldom that scientists get out into the reality. Doctors are in the reality. Scientists, they are in laboratories. But we felt we needed to get out. And in Italy, 2006, uh, in Benevento, in February, we met. We sat down and talked for several days and then we worked for many months and finally published this Benevento resolution. And I will not go through all of it, but you can see that among the bullet points we said that arguments that weak electromagnetic fields cannot affect biological systems do not represent the current spectrum of scientific opinion. We also said that the precautionary principle should be implied. We said that we must inform the population of the potential risks. And we said that we must limit cell phone and cordless phone use by young children and teenagers. And also ban telecom companies from marketing to them. We must protect the children. I mean, if I would die here and now, 
that doesn't matter at all. I mean, you will be shocked, but that's all. But if the children are affected, then there isn't any future any longer. Maybe we should translate, yeah. Um, Dr. Johansson cree que los científicos deben hacer más um, que trabajar en los, labo los en laboratorios. Deben salir y tomar um, resoluciones. Um, los médicos lo hacen, los científicos raramente, normalmente no. Trabajan en laboratorios y no acostumbran a salir, a encontrarse... Uh, uh, tomar resoluciones, uh, buscar soluciones, etc. Pero lo hicieron, una, lo hicieron por una Italia a Benevento, allí se encontraron, estuvieron trabajando durante meses, durante, trabajando muy duro y tomaron, algo, tomaron resoluciones, unas de las cuales, sobre, sobre la radiación, ¿sí? Unas de las cuales fueron uh, que um, se, tiene que hacer, se tiene que tomar mucha precaución, uh, hay que informar a la gente sobre los peligros que conlleva la radiación y limita, limitar uh, el uso de teléfonos móviles a los adolescentes y a los niños. Es muy importante que protejamos a los niños. Uh, el doctor Johansson pone como ejemplo si él muere ahora mismo uh, no pasará nada todos mm, nos quedaremos estupefactos pero no pasará nada más pero si los niños uh, si a los niños les mm, pasa uh, cosas malas si, si, si corren el riesgo de morir ellos eso sí que nos afecta porque los niños son nuestro futuro You know, as a matter of fact, it could be okay to have a coffee break now, if that's all right. And, you know, after the coffee break, you come back, and I have a few more slides. Just a few more. Dice, voy a hacer una pausa ahora, y después enseñará solo unas pocas diapositivas más. Bueno, y no se quedáis preguntas, pues, las dejáis aquí en la mesa, y luego, cuando el doctor Rafael 